Hello, everybody. It's Heather with the Leadership of the Heart podcast. And today I'm thrilled to have uh, Nick Bolas on, on the show. And I met him, like I do many of my guests do LinkedIn. And I could just, you know, there were posts that were out there. My book was coming out. I could see interaction on different posts and just how he showed up with so much emotional intelligence. I know he has a lot to do with learning and development. I just thought he'd be great to have on the show um, as an added, you know, bonus for Leaders with Heart. So welcome, Nick. Oh, thank you very much. It's great to be here. So where are you right now in your leadership journey? So right now, uh, actually the last 14 years uh, in my journey, I, I'm with the company BBL Hospitality. And I started here, uh, as I said, 14 years ago, as a, I was hired as a general manager. And for the first couple of years, I was just doing that. I was just running a hotel, being a, you know, with the team that I had here. And then two years in, uh, I met another one of our general managers who did some training and he's like, Hey, I want you on my team to, to start doing some training. So I joined that team, fell in love with it. We started building programs. He ended up leaving. I ended up taking over the, the training department for, for our company where I would go to all of our hotels. We have 22 hotels and we have uh, about 18 restaurants. We own a restaurant chain as well. So wow. I would just hit the road and had a fantastic team here uh, w that was maintaining the hotel. So I would just go up and down the East Coast. We only have properties up and down the East Coast. And uh, I would just do trainings. And mainly it was a program we built called uh, At Your Service, which was unique because it wasn't like you would think, all right, we're not teaching you how to take care of the guests. We're teaching you how to take care of each other. Ooh. We're taking, we're, we're teaching team members how to love each other, how to have each other's back, how to take care of each other, how to work together. And we believed, and it's proven true, that if our team took care of each other, loved each other, and we use that word openly, uh, then the guest is going to just automatically be taken care of. Mm, so. Yes, I believe that too. So much alignment here. I, I definitely agree that what's in goes out. And, and that's the same thing for just us, right, as humans. And I, that's why I talk about a lot, a lot in, in my book, this, that self-leadership is at the front of it, right? It's at the front and it's the most robust. It's for a reason. It's this, we got to work from the end to go out. So right. I love that concept. And, and I love the fact that you're, you're just take, you're, you know, your heart was taken over by this training and, like, and development and, and growing other people. And it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, and it really helped me develop myself. I mean, I went in, I don't know if I always believed I was a servant leader. I, that is my style. I'm, I, I believe I'm a servant leader, but, I, but along the way, I said, I feel, and I was really big into the servant leadership and, and taking care of the team. And that was the way, to me, that was the way. And all of a sudden I'm like, there's some eyes, there's some eyes that aren't dotted and some T's that aren't crossed. And I couldn't figure out what some of the missing pieces were within me for, uh, to make my servant leadership, you know, more well-rounded. And it finally, it hit me. And I went on this, this, I went on this next journey a lot and I'm still on it. And that's, and you mentioned it at the beginning, emotional intelligence. I took that on front and center. I've done, I did a speech on it at the uh, restaurant show at the Jacob Javits Center, uh, the hotel restaurant show. I just got real big in it. And that was, to me, that was the missing piece at the time. Now I've added other pieces since then, but the emotional intelligence piece, I realized I didn't know who I was. I was out there being, being everything special to my team and, and, but because I didn't know who I was, there were times that I would slip. There were times that I would fall. There were times that I would say, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Hmm. And I'd lay awake at night and just staring at the ceiling and, oh my God, I can't believe it. And, and I, I'm sure I hurt somebody's feelings. I know better. And I just really, I went on that journey to, to really just understand, you know, be more aware of myself and you know, I basically said, okay, this is who I am and this is who I want to be. Let's work on the gaps. Mm. Let's see in the middle what's, what, you know, from, from who I am and what I want to be, what do I need to work on? And I, and I just set on to do that. And, and 
it, to me, that's what made it all make sense to me. Mm, yeah, that that whole gap filling. I well, you know, I believe in this. Obviously, I have a self assessment based upon this, and it is fully about like how do we how do we fill those gaps? And it's the it's, it's the gaps for us, but it's also like the gaps we leave in the hearts of other people because we fail to like that whole like laying in the bed. I, that already says a whole bunch about you that you even lost sleep over it because there are many leaders who walk around aloof and they just have, yeah. and they have just app, they're just absent. They don't even have any clue. Boom. Are you in there? <laughs> they have no clue how much they're hurting uh, those that they're, that look to them for guidance. Right. And so in this case, you, you know, you, maybe you had like, maybe not as much emotional self-management in the moment or whatever it was. Right. But in the end, you still had a lot of self-awareness um, mm -hmm. and it's that idea of like, what were my triggers and how can I stop my actions from taking place? How can I stop doing those particular behaviors? But in the end, you still had a conscience about it, right? right. You had empathy for what maybe you created. And, and that's huge. It's huge. And many leaders are missing that. Yeah, I was, I'm so passionate about the growth of our team. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, you know, I want to say, I, I mean, I don't want, I shouldn't use the word sickness, but it is when I wrote that story to you on that post that you did on LinkedIn that you said, oh, I love it. That was like 4 a.m. And I just woke up and I was in bed and I was thinking about an issue that a, an associate was having and how am I going to help them work through it? And all of a sudden I grab my phone, I look at LinkedIn and you're like, oh, give us a few words, give us a story. And that's just such a true story in my mm -hmm. life and, and how I how I interact with the team. And that's, that happens daily where you're like, oh, wow, 16 hour day headed out the door. I see it and I'm running for it. I'm going to make it. And all of a sudden someone's like, hey, you got a minute. <laughs> and the key to that is, and this is where I've grown. It used to be like, oh yeah, I do. I was on my way out, but yeah, come on. That doesn't work. It has to be absolutely. Follow me. Let's go back to the office. And with the smile and with the with the, the intent to want to really help and, and our associates need to feel that or, mm. or it just doesn't work because then they're like, Oh, geez, thanks. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, they're not feeling, they're, they're feeling like they're putting you, they don't out feel the love, right. They don't feel they don't the care. Feel, they don't feel the love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly. amazing. Well, that the word you use that it just it oh it, it's a thing that keeps ringing true in my life and uh, for those who I look to and I see that they're successful or whatever and 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 doing well with other uh, with leading people is this idea of intentionality. It is mm. intentional, isn't it? Because I think probably all of us, and be including me, after that long of a day, would be super exhausted. And I might I might not go, huh, but I bet you my shoulders would say, huh, if yeah. someone said, please come, you know, like can I ha you have a minute. And so getting to the point where you're just like, you know, I'm going to withhold that. There's a certain level of self-sacrifice there. Um, and again, yeah, a choice, intentionality on the, how I'm going to show up today, you know? Yeah. And, I, and I'm lucky too, I guess, <clears throat> quick shout out to my wife. I mean, she's in the business too, but, you know, but in other relationships I've had, you know, people couldn't understand, you know, my relationships couldn't understand that, oh, geez, we had plans 40 minutes ago and why are you 40 minutes late and oh by the way I want a divorce you know <laughs> or, or, or what I mean I, I know it sounds crazy but you know but my uh my wife now is a uh, uh, works um as a director of catering for a union college so she gets it she gets yes. it and it makes it easy because we both share those feelings and you know that that you know we need to put our teams first Wow. That's so. amazing. Yeah. That's, that's definitely in degree stuff. Right. Because I can think of, I, I, I would say at work, I always put my team first and they knew they were priority for me. There may be other people in the organization that maybe didn't feel like a priority, but the people that were on my team absolutely did, but it was trying to make sure I did balance it. I have four children. So balancing that with also making sure my kids feel like they're priority. And that isn't always the case again, because there are you know, so many busy things and we've got so many things going on and I am trying to meet all these needs. And so right. there is this, you know, how do you get to the point where you're, where, you know, where you can reconcile that and you can keep your marriage intact, right? You can have your, make sure you're, do you have children? I, they're grown. Yeah. But okay. Yes. I have but a like at the point where they feel like they, you know, they have some attention. <laughs> how yeah. do you, how do you reconcile all that? Keeping that kind of work, you know, employee first type of uh, type of thing, but then at the same time, balancing that personal need to meet you and, and all of your uh, family's needs. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know if my wife loves this, but I'll sleep. I, I sleep with my phone. I, all of my staff 
here at this property. I should have mentioned at the beginning, I also still wear the general manager hat for this property, even though I also wear the director of leadership development for the company. So wow. um, yeah, well, you know, the reason that makes sense and why it works for us, and I don't know if I'm off 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 topic here now, but it's, um, it, this is a training facility, this property here. So, you know, the the corporate level of this company will be like, hey, we got this really great person and, and you know, we, we think we can develop them. And so they come to me. The, the good thing is I love it because I love working with those individuals and helping them develop. The bad thing is I'm always starting over when, it, when building the team because when they're ready, it's like, okay, they're ready. And off they go to another, you know, property and then we're, we're doing it all over again. But, you know, and the other thing about that is, you, you know, they would be, they would say, okay, we have someone that we believe can be developed. My belief on that is, you know, there, there are some leaders out there that say, well, if they don't, if someone doesn't want to be developed, if they don't ask, then, you know, then they probably don't want to be developed. That's not my belief. My belief is always be out there on the floor looking for those opportunities because some of the teams is, is they're a little shy. They might sit back and say, yeah, I don't know. It's probably not me. I'm probably not worthy. No, everybody's worthy to grow. Mm -hmm. And you, but if you're not out there looking at those individuals and watching how they perform and watching how they talk to guests and watching how they treat each other, then, then, you know, they're, they're going to keep going about saying, well, I'm not worthy. And we're going to miss the opportunity if we're not watching for mm -hmm. them. So I go right up and I say, Hey, you know what? I just saw what you did with that associate with that guest. Do you ever think you might want to try this? You think you'd ever be interested in this? We don't push. We just plant the seed. Mm, I love that. Yeah, that's, it's critical. I mean, look at finding the greatness, seeking the greatness, digging for the greatness, right? It's a, uh, is really quite critical. And again, not enough leaders do it. I am curious to know, where does your drive to lead come from? And especially like lead in the way you do as a servant? Uh, you know, <laughs> I think I, I just have a passion. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's a tough question because I guess I've been doing it. So I'm 40 years in the business. So, I mean, I've been doing it for so long that I, I, I don't, I think, if I had to really soul search, it's just a passion to want to help others grow and, and to succeed. I used to tell my, my team, I, you know, they'd be up on a stage accepting an award and, and I'd say, you know, I, I got my awards. I got my recognition. I'm, I'm, I'm past that now. I said, I only get really excited when I'm in the audience and I'm watching you get your your award and, and get recognized i there's a the, um the director of sales for this property here right now uh she started with me when she was 18 years old and she's now married a mom she's wow. in her early 30s but she you know i took her under my wing she started in the housekeeping as a house person uh we i i saw it i knew it was there i took her we, we worked together. She grew. She became, my boss walked in one day and said, I got good news and I got bad news for you. I said, well, give me the good news. He goes, well, the good news is we really appreciate you developing our team. He said, the bad news is I'm taking Samantha from you. That, that's her name. She wouldn't, she'd be okay if I said her name, but, wow. and she went on to be an award-winning general manager for us. She, she nice. worked, she was a GM for two of our properties right out of high school. And then she became general manager of the year for New York state oh for goodness. small property. I, she asked me to deliver the speech. She didn't, she didn't at the time want to talk in front of a crowd. So we went out to this local casino. I gave the speech and then Heather, you're not going to believe it. She came off the stage. She had her award. And later on that day, she looked at me and she was teary eyed. And she said, I said, what's wrong? This is your day. She goes, I don't want to be a GM anymore. Oh, oh, no. oh my God. I, I, and I gotta be honest, it, a little bit of emotional unintelligence crept into me. And I was like, we work so hard. We work years <laughs> and years and now you don't want to be that. 
and then it took me a couple of days and I had, I went back and I'm like, you know what, you can be whatever you want to be. And if that's not what you want to be right now, then what do you want to be? She said, I want to try my hand at sales. What a great story. Our sales director here was going to transition to another property. I said, Samantha, welcome home. And she's wow. been here ever since. Oh, the, wow. And she's done yeah. well, I'm assuming. I love that. Story. Outstanding. Outstanding. Oh, that's great. The bad no, that's news. That is a great story. The bad news is she now has decided to be a stay-at-home mom, uh, but I, but I, 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 she has my blessing and support. She's done so great, and and uh, another one of our associates that we also mentored has moved up into that role. So it's all all a great story, and mm. we wish Samantha the best. Actually, tomorrow is her last day. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, we wish her well. Tell Samantha we wish her well from the, I will. the podcast. <laughs> now, uh, I'm curious, uh, now that we've heard all just, I mean, you obviously lead with a lot of heart. And mm -hmm. now I want you to reflect on a time when maybe you were not the best version of you. You were not maybe this much, uh, much as much of a heart-centered leader. Maybe you weren't proud of your leadership. What, what would that look like specifically in a story format? And then what did you do to come out of it? So I, 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 the story that comes to mind, and, and I love this story, uh, and I don't know, I don't necessarily, yeah, I was a bad leader, uh, but I, there's another uh, young lady, I'm allowed to use her name too, she said, Tierra. she's a general manager for us down in our Tampa uh, Spring Hill Suites in Tampa, Florida, and she started here with me, she was with me for seven years. And she was a front office manager and she, she was studying, she was front office manager, but she was studying, she was getting a degree in biology. And I'd always say, I think you'd be good at this. I think you'd be good at this. One day she, she goes, no, I'm going to be a physician's assistant. One day she came in, she sat down and she said, you know what? I like to do things that I'm good at. And I think I'm good at this. So go for it. So for seven years, we worked. Uh, with her but she she had some issues that she was struggling to work through I liked her I didn't want to hurt her feelings but the team kept coming to me saying we can't work with her she's not a team player uh, she'll never help out she'll you say good morning she doesn't say good morning and I said okay all right all right I'll talk to her I'll talk to her and I called her in she sat right in that chair uh, which you can't see but there's a chair there and I was like, Tierra, um, I, some of the team feels like, well, well I, I don't feel this way. I, what I'm about to say, I don't feel this way. I think you're doing great, but some of them feel like, now keep in mind, I don't feel this way. I think you're doing great, but I really did. I really saw everything that they were saying that was wrong. And so I kept skirting the issue and dancing around it and, and finally, she looks at me. She's an extremely intelligent woman. She looks at me and she said, cut the you know what, Nick. She said, if I'm doing something wrong, I want to know. I feel like you're not being honest with me. I ran for the nearest <laughs> telephone booth and, whoosh, and out came the S leotard. I was Superman. She gave me permission. She gave me permission to leave. And, and I, and I just boom, boom, boom. I just came with it. And, and it, it was, and I tell this story and pe I think people don't believe it, but, but hand to God, she went home and came back the next day and you wouldn't even have thought it was the same person. She was, can I help you? Good morning, smiling. Great. And it was that fast. I, wow. everyone, everyone came up to like, ah, What's, what's going on here? What's, <laughs> and I said, let's just go with it. So then a few, a, maybe a few weeks passed by and I said, Tira, I got to ask. I just got to ask what happened. She said, I, I, uh, uh. she said, I, uh, huh. uh, that's okay. Is that weird? Yeah, that's all right. No. She said, I went home that night and I thought that what you said about me not being a team player and how my team felt about me. And she said, I couldn't live with myself. I, I don't want to be that person. And I didn't know I was that person. 
she said, and so I told myself, I'm, I'm, I need to make changes to be successful. And I just, to me, that just opened the floodgates that our team wants to be successful. They want to do great work. And as long as we deliver that message the right way, that's, they want that. They want you to set the expectation. And, mm -hmm. and that was, that was probably the biggest leadership lesson for me because, because I did that whole dance. <laughs> I've been, I've been doing that dance for years before that, you know, oh, I, everybody, but I don't think I love you. You're doing a great job, but they weren't. And so we, they weren't growing. The property wasn't doing well because, you know, I wasn't setting the right expectation, but that, that might be my best, my favorite story ever because it, mm -hmm. it helped. She gave me permission to grow by, mm -hmm. by just being like, Nick, just give it to me. You try, you're hiding something. I know it. I can feel it. Just tell me what you're trying to tell me. And what a wonderful experience that was for me. Mm, thank you for sharing that. That was so rich. I mean, her, her courage to just say like, give it to me, give it to me straight. Um, your awakening that, oh, they actually want that from me and I need to do that in order for them to grow. I mean, this it, is critical. Um, and then, if, and then of course her, her awakening and enlightenment after she came back, but just, I mean, to see that happen so fast, it had to have been kind of, yeah, jarring, but like earth shattering in a positive way. Like, wow, transformation at its best, if quick time, right. It's not like you're seeing it over months and months. You're just, wow. So yeah. I just think that that just shows how much the power of setting clear expectations and believing in people and, you know, giving good feedback for feedback that's grounded in love and care versus yeah. that kind that just breaks people down and damages them forever. You know, and so right. these are so many lessons inside that story. Yeah. And we've, we've, we really work really hard to create a safe work environment. Anybody knows they can say anything to me, to each other. It's everything safe. Nobody's, nobody's like, Oh, we better not say that he'll, he'll be mad at us. Uh, it's just wide open spaces, wide open, safe spaces. And, and that's what's made this team so great. It, you know, what we're struggling a little bit now, COVID's, COVID's dealt us a tough hand. Uh, we had 60 associates here that were the most beautiful people you'd ever meet. And it was like an orchestra. It was all oh, what everybody sang together. It was beautiful. And we had to say goodbye. We went from 60 down to 11. And, oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And now, but the good thing is, and probably more so than any of our properties, when we said, okay, we're whoever wants to come back, we're ready. Many of our people came back, but there was some holes that we yeah. had to fill. So now, now you got to get everybody playing off the same sheet of music again. And, you know, it's now front desks like, oh, I don't want to work with so-and-so because I'm intimidated, but I said, listen, everybody's themselves. I said, we just have to sit down and understand each other and it'll, it's going to be beautiful again. And it already is. It already mm. is. And I, and I think, you know, going back to Kevin Monroe's, you know, what he has offered with the gratuity thing or gratitude thing, that was, that was big for me because I was struggling. I was, I found myself, I actually even wrote a paper called a view from the ledge I was talking, trying to talk every day people off a ledge that, Heather, I was standing on myself. Yeah. I was on the same ledge. I, I was saying, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. But I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that it was going to be okay. You know, in my paper, I wrote, write about talking them off the ledge. But, one, but, I, but in the meantime, I could feel my foot slipping, you know, in that I was going to go down. And did I want to go down? Maybe I do want to go down. But but no, I can't go down because I got to be there for, for, you know, the team. And uh, it, that, that whole, that whole COVID thing was going to go down in history as being one of the hardest things I've had to do in, in my career, but I don't know how I got off on the COVID. Well, I mean, I think, I think that's a good, I'm, I'm happy you did because I think many leaders right now that are listening are probably going through that same thing where they're trying to lead well, but they're having a hard time leading themselves well. I went through a thing like this. It was several years ago, I worked at an organization and they went through, uh, within a six month period, there were two reorganizations. And each time my role changed and um, 
I was already kind of this culture ambassador uh, person and they wanted this after the second reorg again, where my role was also changed. They asked me to go around and talk to all the other people whose, whose jobs were impacted as kind of this, again, this person who was going to smooth things out, make sure that we can give them what they want and leaders can respond. And what I didn't realize is exactly what you're talking about. I was stuck. I was mm. miserable myself because no one asked me my opinion about what I wanted. They just kept putting me in different positions. And yeah. then I wasn't courageous enough to say, stop for a second. No, I'm not going to be the ambassador. I, I don't think I have it in me. I, I'm hurting and there's pain already in me. So I totally yeah. know what you're talking about. And uh, what I've been telling leaders during all of this, like those who are having being squirmish about returning to the office or returning to the workplace or wherever they're at, is to first deal with their own emotions. And I speak from experience. Deal with your own emotions first. Figure out what you got to do to settle your own self, minimize the squirm so that you can show up with more strength for those people as they return, as they come. And they're looking for like open arms and they want to they, they want to feel a little bit like it's still home for them. Right. Comfort there. Uh, so yeah, uh, it was just, is it when you said that I immediately put myself right back in that spot and I know exactly how you're feeling. That ledge is a perfect, a perfect metaphor too. Yeah. The grit. So back to Kevin a little bit, the gratitude thing was important to me at the time because I, it, it you know, it didn't fix anything. And, and it was funny because there was a quote, gratitude is not a cure-all, it's a cope-all. And I can't really put my finger on it. And I couldn't put my finger on it in meetings with him and the rest of the group, but it just made some of the hurt go away. It made me feel good that I was walking up to the team and and, and being sincere about my gratitude. And Alan, thank you so much. I just saw what you did with that guest. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I'm I, I, Thank you. I love it that you're on our team and, and just being more direct. Mm. And, it, and, I, and I was able to, you know, when I did have my downtime in my office, I was able to say, okay, I'm coping because I feel great that I'm making others feel great. And what started happening as I'm walking through the property, I'm hearing all of a sudden now it's peer to peer. Oh yeah. Alan's telling Sally, Hey, I saw what you did there. It's great. And Sally's telling George, Hey, you know, I, you know, thank you for helping me on that. I, you know, I was in the weeds and I appreciate it. And that is what builds the workplace culture when the team is singing off the same page and that's what's building it that whole that whole gratitude thing was a lifesaver for me when I when when it came into my life and it was very recent I mean I only just met Kevin recently uh, but it was it helped it, 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 it helped and is helping me transform or get back to where we were that's awesome well you know I think we all have to find our source and you know, showing appreciation towards others it releases dopamine in our own brains. And so we, we want it, we, it releases it in theirs, the ones who receive it and ours, the ones who give it. And so being grateful and showing appreciation and recognition for those, especially, you know, obviously we're talking about leadership at heart. So those who look to us for guidance uh, and, and leadership, and we have to be there constantly pointing out the little, it's the little things. And the, Gallup had something that went out, I don't know, it was probably five or six years ago that was about employees not even remembering if they have been recognized, if it hadn't been done in the last seven days. So if you are someone who just exudes and has just this way of like showing appreciation gratitude and all the time to people around you they will always feel like they are appreciated appreciated like the work they do is is valued and like they're doing yeah. meaningful work too it's huge yeah but i think what leaders need to realize and I, and I already said it and i'm sorry i i have a tendency to be redundant but you can't be staring at your computer and telling somebody thanks you know great yeah. job today it's it's eye to eye it's sincerity they got to feel that you really mean that and you have to really mean that you know you have to really feel that and they and then they're going to see it and they're going to feel it that it only works that way it doesn't yes. work any other way than yeah. that you can't be fake that's for sure you can't be <laughs> fake yeah exactly and that's perfect cuz i usually ask people you know what would be a pearl of wisdom you'd leave our people with that are you know that are um, listening right now and i think that's a good one right there being very sincere about the appreciation that you do give would be critical and all, and all the benefits of living in gratitude. And then of course, expressing that gratitude to those that look to you for guidance, right? Yeah, I, 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 I believe, well, I, 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 that's a pearl. I like another pearl. I like, you know, what was one key thing for me? We started this conversation with this pearl, but that's work on self-awareness and social awareness. Mm -hmm. You gotta know who you are 
and you have to know who your team is so that you can lead effectively. And, and, it, and so many people will say, oh, yeah, I know who I am. I know who I am. But you really have to drill down. Uh, in my speech at the Jacob Javits Center, at the, uh, I had a slide and it was entitled, uh, Be Aware of Awareness. And, and or be aware of self-awareness and the AHLEI, American Hotel Lodging Educational Institute was like, oh, well, we don't want that slide. We don't, it doesn't make sense to us. I said, no, keep it, it was my program, <laughs> keep it in there. I love it because it's one thing to say, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm, today I'm gonna be more self-aware, but you, you, you lose that unless you're always aware that I need to be working on my self-awareness and the awareness of my, of my team. And, and it, I think that's just so key because you make better decisions and lead better when, when it, if I, I have a quote and I'm looking down because I'm reading it, but, uh, and I have it memorized, so I don't know why I'm reading it, but it's by Sir John Whitmore. I am able to control only that which I am aware of. That which I am unaware of controls me. Awareness empowers me. That's powerful. I just... That's one of my, that my most favorite quotes. Yeah, that is powerful. You are, it is so true. And of course, self-awareness is the doorway to emotional intelligence. And, and you just, you really cannot be a leader with heart or one that shows up with lots of care, unless you do have a big, big heaping amount of emotional intelligence and you can grow it. I mean, there are those who are born with it, more of it than most, but you can right. grow it, but it starts with awareness. And there's so many great ways to do it. I do talk about this a lot, but um, I have a caring leadership Academy that kind of blends or goes with the book that and the assessment and the community, mm -hmm. which Nick, join the community. It's a free community that you can join. I don't know if you've already taken the assessment, but I think you would love it. Um, but, but there's a caring leadership Academy that has um, the courses that align with the book. And a, a couple of the courses have emotional intelligence as the, at their foundation. There's just no way around it. You can't be a caring leader or leader with heart unless you have emotional intelligence. Right. <laughs> you just can't. Yeah. yeah. Well, That's my big thing now. That's awesome. Well, you, for those who are listening, if you if you received a lot of value in this conversation, I know you have learned a lot because I know I have, and just the great stories that Nick told. Uh, please do share it far and wide. Make sure that everybody out in the universe gets it because I think you know leaders need to hear this stuff for sure, and even everybody needs to hear this stuff. Not even just those managing people. And then the other thing is go to Apple Podcast or wherever you listen and write a five star review. When you write those reviews, it actually brings the podcast up on the algorithms because there's a lot of leadership podcasts. I think there's something special here when we go to the heart of what uh, the leader maybe didn't do so well and then what they did to come out of it. We really are providing practical solutions to leaders who are looking to grow themselves. So, so do that. Um, but Nick, this has been great. I'm so excited. I, I, you know, I had you on here. I'm, I'm just grateful to have you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And I love your book. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks everybody for joining the Leadership of the Heart podcast. Be well.